This is Hiroja Shive with a, another episode of Satoshi's Treasure Hunters. And this episode is a bit different. Uh, we're here to talk about the second hunt that the Satoshi Treasure Hunt game makers are making called Satoshi Tezo's Hunt. So this new hunt, it was a, it's a little unexpected given some of the qualms that people have had about um, the Satoshi's treasure hunt itself, about, you know, we talked about some communication, um, some of the game errors, if you will, uh, the speed of the clue drops, and the lack of a public fund disclosure for the, the Bitcoin prize. Uh, but even with those things, people are still playing the game. They're still engaged. I'm still playing the game. I'm still talking about it. But another hunt has dropped. And this is a, uh, a hunt that is doing not with Bitcoin, but with Tezos, uh, a blockchain that has had some issues in the past, but has basically gone full steam since its launch uh, September 2018. And is uh, basically what it boils down to what this second hunt is for um the Tezos, the community, the blockchain community, is is gamifying development. And uh, we'll go into the details of that. We'll, we'll talk about the announcement, the pairing, what Tezos is. And um, we'll talk about a couple terms like smart contracts, NFTs. And we'll we'll talk a little bit about Tezos, the blockchain. It's it's a bit complicated because they're, they're trying to do a whole lot, if you will, when it comes to this particular design for this particular blockchain project so uh, so there's that as far as for this video now if you're new to my channel and uh, new to basically satoshi's treasure if you will the satoshi's treasure hunt uh, let me kind of break it down for you uh, the first game satoshi's treasure is a game that has um, Crypto Puzzles is an alternative reality game, which has these different style puzzles, um, anything from going to a physical location in uh, the world, which are called geolocation clues, uh, code breaking, where you have to solve uh, a particular style of code breaking to order to solve the puzzle. And these puzzles are um, methods of attaining key, but I'm just kind of breaking the style of puzzles here. Uh, you have some cri really serious cryptographic where you're breaking down images or files to get further information. You have uh, contest puzzles where you either as a pair or a group or individual compete with the wider community or hunters to attain the solve for the puzzle or the key. You have um, development or another style contest where if you're a developer or have some kind of skill set, if you uh, enter these particular type of hackathons, if you will, and you win, you could, in essence, not only win some money, but um, a key. And these keys are, a, there's supposed to be a thousand keys with a combination of any four in a key. So when you get the clue, solve for the puzzle, you obtain a key. And this key you hold kind of like, um, like a key ring and any combination of 400. So you can be key one and key 656 because some keys are not gonna be solved. You combine any 400 in between there and you will solve for the price private uh, Bitcoin address, which is uh, it's supposed to be a bounty that is equivalent to 1 million USD uh, in Bitcoin. And that's basically the essence of the Satoshi's treasure hunt. People play either as individual hunters or they form clans. I have links below to the public clans that people have announced. Basically say, hey, we're this and this such clan. You can come join us. Uh, there's a lot of private clans out there. You can go into the uh, Telegram channel and be able to meet up with different clans or different people or form your own clan. You still have the ability to pretty much collect a lot of keys. A lot of keys have been either publicly disclosed by people are still available to solve. There's a few expired keys. Uh, there's potential for a market as the game progresses for these different types of keys that uh, 
people possess could be up for sale or trade to in order to be able to collect, you know, that the right quotient amount of keys to order, you know, get that Bitcoin prize. Um, and now they're taking some of the that application and creating this new hunt for Tezos, which has some similar elements, but is really is really a completely different hunt. This is not a hunt I would say from the description that is going to be for everybody. Like right now, Satoshi Treasure Hunt, you don't have to really be a developer or even really truly tech savvy on as far as the cryptographic parts to be able to play the game. Many of these puzzles or keys, like the, the recent Hamilton key, which was the, um, what's it called? Uh, like the smile key, which is this picture key where you have to figure out different animation smiles and be able to put, uh, find what they are, figure out their English names and put it into the crypto page and obtain the key. Um, there was the Hamilton key, which was an audio key where if you were able to figure out the songs and the phrase and solve it, you'd be able to unlock for that key. Before that was a tone key where it's 10, key, 10 songs smashed up. So there's simplified keys that, you know, any kind of lay person could, could obtain. Uh, there's also geolocation keys where it's just a matter of just getting to the location, whether you get a friend, a network somehow, or able to do it yourself, uh, be able to get that location. And there's supposed to be some kind of task keys where you actually have to do something in the real world and perform a task. You can almost say like the, some of the contest keys or task keys where you had to go out and interview people. And uh, if you had the most interviews, uh, you would be able to obtain a key, an extra key, if you will. Um, yeah, so th there's ways where you, for that particular hunt, you don't have to be, you know, tech savvy to order to be able to obtain all the keys and if you're part of a clan you'd be able to have like you know the clan depending on how your clan set up you'd be able to have those keys as well uh, or access to them <clears throat> so let's get into the announcement and kind of get into the breakdown of what the second hunt is so there was an announcement via the official twitter account by satoshi's treasure that the tezo foundation is excited to announce its partnership with satoshi's treasure and the launch of the tezo satoshi's treasure hunt and that was August 22nd. And this is the official Satoshi Treasure site. As you can see here, um, there's quite a number of keys that have been released. There's a total of 60 keys out that have been released with, I think like 51 of them. Um, that you can still obtain or, or were, have the capacity to obtain. But nine, I think, have gone back into what is called the vault, where it's not possible for any hunter or clan to be able to get to. Um, as you can see right here, the Tezo hunt is coming soon. Down below, you can see for the Tezo hunt, they have a box that is going to be available for people. You also have all inquiries at uh, questions at Toshi's Treasure Hunt dot XYZ. They have their policies, their Twitter, Telegram, and Reddit channels. You can also subscribe to get their newsletter. I have to say that their newsletter is a little behind when it comes to announcements, though a couple of them have been on time, but I would say for the most part, they're like like an hour or two behind from like Twitter or their website being updated. So this was the announcement. Let's kind of enhance that. So the Tezo hunt uh, announcement. So Satoshi's Treasure launched a global hunt for $1 million of Bitcoin in April 2019. Hunters solve difficult puzzles and physical challenges to receive keys, and whichever team can assemble 400 of them first will win the Bitcoin pot. The hunt is currently underway and thousands of teams have been formed to go for the prize. We're extremely excited to announce our second hunt in the partnership with Tezo's foundation to create a massive multiplayer game of skill where people can solve difficult puzzles and technical problems for the benefit of the Tezos and broader cryptocurrency community. To receive Tezo tokens or TEZ, which is X, um, XTZ TEZ from a prize pool of 1 million 
x t z so it's going to be two completely different things going on here the Tezo hunt is a very different from the bitcoin hunt that is built on top of a set of smart contracts which means that the clever hunters can be more immediately rewarded for using the problem solving skills to beat puzzles we're very much looking forward to seeing seeing how this changes the dynamics of the game in terms of teams, clans, individuals, and strategies used to win. Our favorite thing about Satoshi's treasure is the amount of software that gets written by hunters to facilitate finding and storing keys and clues that will, in the end, benefit the Tezo ecosystem. We expect that a great deal of new tools will be created to facilitate um, interacting with the hunt contracts, store and potentially even sell reward tokens and parse through the plethora of new clues in the Tezo hunt. Tezo formally verified smart contracts are a huge boon to anyone designed in a high stakes contract like this one. We're grateful for the assistance and developers from the Tezo community in creating the SD contracts. In order to make sure that they are as robust and secure as possible, we're waiting to launch the main hunt until an audit has been completed. However, clans and individuals who are anxious to get started winning Tezzies can play in the Tezo mini hunt which has a prize of 5,000 XTZs, which is equivalent to um, $5,000. Uh, one uh, Tezo is a dollar, you know, like maybe like a couple pennies. And we'll begin on September 10th. For more information on that, we suggest you follow an official Twitter account, add Toshi's Treasure, watch our website, and most of all, keep an eye on transmissions from satellites that might be zooming overhead. They're talking about the Blockstream satellite, and um, I have a link in the show notes to a website that keeps track of that as well as a Twitter handle which keeps track of those um, satellite transmissions. Best of luck to all new and existing hunters on this new Tezo hunt and on the mini hunt as well. Team SD. So FAQs. What is the prize pool of the SD Tezo hunt? The prize pool contains 1 million XTZ coins which is equivalent as of the recording of this episode September 2nd 2019 1 million dollars. How do hunters obtain prizes? By solving clues and challenges to receive non-fungible prize tokens, we'll discuss what NFT is, on the Tesla blockchain. There are three classes of prize tokens, so they're going to have three styles of tokens. Uncommon, which is kind of like, you know, baseball or any role-playing game where there's, there's a shit ton of them. Rare and epic. Um, and I guess rare and epic, there'll be like a limited set of those which are redeemable for different amounts of XT from the ST price song smart contract. The exact payout amounts for each class of token are being finalized. So they're going to determine how many uncommon tokens, how many rare and epic tokens you need to combine together, much similar in the fashion of the 400 keys you will need to um, unlock the Bitcoin private address for the Sushi Treasure Hunt. They're finalizing how many, the combination you need for that. Uh, the exact payouts for each class of token are being finalized. When do the winning numbers receive their XT prizes in exchange for the prize tokens they've accumulated? So, the ST prize smart contract can enter payout mode only once enough tokens to claim the entire 1 million XT pot have been transferred to the contract. This will likely happen once the game is over and most of all the clues and challenges have been solved. Roughly how long do you expect the hunt will take? Our estimate is one year from today, but it's hard to amount for this skill of the hunters. So, f August 22nd, 2019 to August 22nd, 2020. What if I don't want to wait for that and want to get rewarded immediately? Since our Tezo hunt uses NFT tokens, you're free to find a buyer for your prize token on the open market. If you have a prize token that can be redeemed for 1000 XT, perhaps your friend will give you 900 XT right now and pocket the 100 XT difference once the prize payouts are complete. Does the Tezo hunt have the same clues as the Bitcoin hunt? No. Each hunt is separate. They may be extremely Occasional clues which feature rewards in both hunts, but for the vast majority of the clues, users can choose which hunt they want to participate in by solving only clues for that hunt, or solve all clues to be in the running in both hunts. Who is eligible to participate in the Tezo hunt? Eligibility to participate is open to any person who has not worked for the entity that receives funding from the Tezo Foundation to work on the Tezo Core Protocol. This will help include new developers in the Tezo ecosystem, the Tezo Foundation, Satoshi Treasure Team, Stove Labs, and the TQ Tezo employees are, are excluded as well. So, um, it would be interesting to see about you know KYC and ALMA because how are you going to exchange or redeem these tokens? Might 
prohibit or exclude people that might not want to do that or can't because of their 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 location uh, participate in whatever exchanges that might have this platform and it would be interesting to see how they address that issue okay so stove labs made an announcement which was august 28th so six days after the the game announced stove labs is happy to announce that they've launched uh, the first Tezo NFT standard proposal implemented using Lingo Lang. It's the type of language that's being used on the Tezo blockchain for um, smart contracts. Uh, they think of it like Python, C, that type of a deal, but this is the language that's being used for smart, track, smart contracts specifically for the Tezo blockchain. Uh, used for at Toshi Treasures XTZ hunts. Usage examples available now. Upcoming wallet integration. And they have the proposed interface. I don't speak development, but um, like everything that I talk about, there's a link in the show notes for you to follow along and find out for yourself. Um, there is a bigger reveal um, from the NFT stove standard here. It follows standard outlines a smart contract interface required to enable non-fungible tokens on the Tesla blockchain, along with integration examples. This is their proposed interface going from down here. Usage and examples. Uh, you can contribute, get in touch with them. Uh, minting of a new token, burning of existing tokens in their um, FAQs, their partners on the project is Lego. Um, and the Satoshi Treasure Hunt. Made possible thanks to the Tesla Foundation. And this is Tezos.com. Secure, upgradable, build to last. This is the um, Tezo uh, platform for you to understand about the blockchain and get all their information, find out all the different organizations that are part of it. Um, the Tezo Foundation. Is the organization responsible for funding this and having some governance in how the Tesla project goes. They are funding like a lot of the different development space. Um, similar to the Litecoin Foundation, what was supposed to be the Bitcoin Foundation, and that's more of um, something that Blockstream, or in the case of the Adobe One, has the um, hard fund or hardcore fund, which was to independently uh, fund developers in the Bitcoin space. Um, I think they raised up to 50 Bitcoins for that purpose and gave it up to two people. Um, things of that nature that it helps to um, distribute funds and just fund different projects to get you know the, the squeaky wheel going out here in this um, space. It's very difficult really, even for good ones to get people from within the community to fund these projects even some big open source communities like you know github or when github was open kind of open source git labs btc pay service um lightning labs different things and so it's it's interesting what they're trying to do here so we're going to talk about the three terms that are going to be often used when it comes to this uh hunt which is smart contracts um NFTs and tokens, and then we'll talk about the Tezo blockchain. So, first off, a <coughs> smart contract uh, is something that Nick Zabo basically created or conceptualized. Um, I want to say like in the nineties, early nine, like late early nineties, and basically to boil down the concept of what a smart contract is is i'm going to give you the visual of these um amazon stores you know where you walk in there's no people everything is you just um electronic you you don't even have to scan anything you just go in pick up your items and through their cameras and sensors in the in the building they 
got you as far as, um, like, you have to have your phone, I think, maybe, is, like, the biggest thing you have to do. Your phone on, and it has your, your membership active or the app. And then it's like, boop, um, Herbs Your Shive. You're in Amazon Store 366. You picked up some bananas, a Red Bull, some licorice. I know, not not healthy stuff at all. And you're out the door. Boom. And all this is done with no interactions with any humans or anything like that. It's basically all done electronically. And that's what a smart contract does. Is it performs the functions that middlemen or society or humans have done. Remove that element and do it in a conceptualized way where when you go through the different charts, think of like a Plinko from... Uh, Price is Right, where you just go boop, 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 or dynamos, where you hit the one dynamo and it just knocks all the dynamos. When you hit all the different, everything kind of goes along the path of the machine. In this case, the smart contract. And that's what these smart contracts do. Is if you input this information in this certain specific manner, you're going to get the specific results. And um, that's what they're doing with these smart contracts. And the design for the purpose of this particular hunt, it's the uncommon tokens, the rare and epic tokens. These three tokens, when inputted in the smart contract uh, in a certain way, uh, obviously it's going to be the, the amounts of each ones, will unlock, in this case, the, the Tezo prize. And when that happens, you know, all the cake is... Doo -doo 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 then the person is going to go with the money. The problem is, is <laughs> with smart contracts, and it's been an issue with Ethereum, which is the ones that have been really proactively in this space, and they have some issues with the whole DAO and the splitting off with um, the chain with um, Ethereum Classic, uh, is that and some other projects were human error in the coding. Uh, to error is human. And if you make these errors with these things, they're supposed to be the code is law. You can have people basically inputting the, the contract using the, the terms of the contract in the case of the DAO and it's coming, it's coming with all the Ethereum or uh, <laughs> messing around trying to figure out how the contract works and end up blocking the entire project's funds forever. Um, and there's been other issues where because people are not, this is so new and it has not really fundamentally really been tested, you're locking up monetary value in it and people are, are losing their funds, uh, the, the contract crashes or breaks, there's these errors, and it's this really, really new space. And so for them to take their time to make sure that the contracts have been validated, been audited, and just, you know, not to say hacker proof, but I would say less error prone, where it's not possible for someone maybe to lock up the contract, abscond with the funds. Uh, that's probably the two biggest ones, or break the contract in general, is just um, I think smart on their part. Uh, for something this this high value, one million prize, considering you know with Ethereum with funds that have been absconded with it's really not in those terms but just in general terms for people thinking oh a million dollars that's still quite a bit of bit of monetary value really that could be lost um so that's the essence of what smart contracts is and what they're going to do is it looks like from the sound of it they're going to have quite a few they're going to have the mega one which is the main prize and these little mini hunts along the way uh the first one being the one september 10th and then and, and seems like each puzzle is going to be a smart contract where if you solve the puzzle that's how the tokens are going to be dispensed versus on the Satoshi's treasure hunt where you get um, a passphrase and a decryptor page you enter the passphrase and the decryptor page and then voila the um, the key is released to you the fragment key is released to you uh, it seems like in this case you're solved for the puzzle I'm either input the token from that puzzle or somehow receive a token from that puzzle and and then you hold on to that particular token because they're going to be uncommon, rare, and epic and gather as many of these different style tokens until you have the, the right quotient amount to unlock the main 
Christ. And so this comes to our part where we can actually talk about what tokens are. Okay, so t- there's two types of tokens. There's um, the tokens and the concept of the XDT Tez and the game pieces, if you will, the uh, uncommon, rare, and epic. And these tokens are called non-fungible tokens. But let's talk about what a token is so we can get to the non-fungible part. So a token is just a representation, an object of value. Uh, you Normally they're in like arcades, laundromats, or like carnivals where you get the tickets, you gather these tickets, and then you can input for the prize. You pay, you know, 20 bucks or whatever, and it gives you like a thousand tickets, and then you go around the carnival space with these tickets, and then you can win various prizes or interests in different uh, rides or spaces. And they're not meant to be actually equivalent to the money that you spent. Once you spent the money, you're not going to actually get uh, the, 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 to- the, the tokens, you're not going to actually get your dollar back unless, you know, you throw a conniption or something like that and be like, oh, this is the most horrible ride, what, whatever, to get that. For the most part, what is spent is done. Uh, non-fungible aspect of it is, for the purpose of, you know, the cryptocurrency space, is that fungibility, the concept of fungibility is if I were to tear a dollar bill, if you will, which I'm not going to do right now, but it's a piece of the paper. If I were to, like this were a dollar bill, if I were to rip it up in pieces, tape it back up, go spend it, uh, a place of business will accept it if it's taped the right way or it's not that much of a tear. Because the U.S. Treasury, when you give that dollar to the Treasury, they're going to replace it with another dollar. And that was what makes it fungible. Because all the pieces of the paper have equal value or equal weight. And therefore, when a piece of paper gets destroyed or damage in some sense and it's you have enough of the representation of it you will if you actually mail it to the u.s treasury get that that economic piece of paper back to you um, and that's what makes it kind of fungible if it's destroyed stolen you don't actually get the stolen amount the exact same stolen dollars that you utilize with the numerals or whatever no you get maybe the equivalent back um, if you're able to recover your actual property versus like a car, which is a one of a kind, non-fungible, where if it is stolen, uh, if you have insurance, you, then you can buy, depending on your insurance, uh, either equivalent car to replace it or something of lesser value, depending on your type of insurance to get it. Unless it's act, that actual car is physically recovered by law enforcement, um, it's done so basically it's non-fungible you can't exchange and go please please give me from the Chevy dealership the same exact vehicle my car was stolen no you have to actually get that physical property back and that's what non-fungible is is they're unique they're rare if it is lost stolen destroyed you're not going to get back from in this case uh, the Satoshi Tezo hunt people that exact same token it's once it's gone it's it's gone and that's what makes these coins unique and also prevents them from being i guess you could say um sec securities about you know when you use cryptocurrencies at least in the states uh you have to worry about the whole capital gains issue and you don't with my understanding please don't quote me my understanding with non-fungible tokens because they don't have the same kind of economic weight or value uh, currently as we speak. Um, so because of these uncommon, rare, and epic, uh, the style of tokens, if you will, is formulated on the, the Tesla blockchain is X, Z, T, and then lowercase Tez to represent the token value um, as far as 
indicators of what that particular um, crypto type of coin is. It's not actually a Tezos, it's a token. And because of that, they're able to dispense quite a few of them, they will, particularly on commons, you know, when it comes to cards like baseball and gaming and stuff, there's a, there's a shit ton of them, really. There's like, I don't know, 2,000 copies of, you know, William A's or whatever versus 100 of Babe Ruth. You know, one is very common, you know, uncommon, uh, very common, if you will. And the other is, um, you know, rare or epic. <clears throat> That's pretty much the basics when it comes to the non-fungible tokens part. Um, let's see. All right, let's talk about what Tezos is. All right, so Tezos has been around in the cryptocurrency space for a while. One of the reasons why it launched, and I have links in the in the descriptor, uh, September 2018, then when it was initially announced and being developed around 2016, 2017, is that its foundation, the Tezo Foundation, was under some kind of legal battle. And it's still an ongoing legal battle about the ownership of the Tezo Foundation and the blockchain property. Um, I have a link to the Wired article about the two people involved in the legal battle, battle that they were having over this issue, which seems for the most part to have been um, resolved enough to where they've actually now finally launched their blockchain September 2018. Uh, which means it's been one year since its launch. Um, what they're doing is, in a sense, they're very similar to Ethereum in the sense that they are doing these smart contracts, these programmable, their purpose is these programmable programs on top of this blockchain to do these smart contracts and tokenization of an economy system. Um, at the same time, trying to be a monetary system. They have two forms of addresses, which is the X. Um, XTZ, which is the very tradable thing that you will see on the uh, exchanges and um, any site that keeps track of the value of the different cryptocurrencies out there, like Coin Market Cap, if you will. But I, I personally prefer Coin Gecko, if you will. Uh, there's that particular address, and then there's this other one where you have the ability, the second address that allows you to participate in a different consensus mechanism than that of the Bitcoin mechanism where it's a proof of work. This is a proof of delegation and a proof of stake. So let me describe proof of stake. Proof of stake is where you take the value of whatever type of coins that you possess and then you set them aside um, and lock them up for to be able for the purposes of being able to either um, vote on projects in the case of Dash, like fund nodes, or uh, have a greater proof of say of what's going on with the value of locking it up for a different time for something to be able to obtain a greater value later down the road. Uh, that's what proof of stake does, is where you lock up the tokens or the coins themselves. Proof of delegation is where you combine the concept of proof of stake and delegation where you take your coins and it allows you to vote uh, within the community as a large on different proposals. So instead of like, for example, the Bitcoin um, side where they have the BIP and then various different Bitcoin developers work on the different BIPs to propose it to the community that for a soft fork or hard fork, mostly soft forks are occurring, that if you add this BIP into the overall network system, then, you know, such and such change, like for example, SegWit. And then they make it, you know, they put the proposal out there, they put a flag date saying this is when it should be activated, they get the miners to agree network, that didn't quite happen with Bitcoin, there was a split, but that's pretty much the purpose of consensus is where you're trying to get it. You have to get everyone pretty much to agree and it's, um, in the case of soft fork forks, it's backwards compatible uh, versus hard fork where you basically have to upgrade or you're lost, um, allowing for the system to continue forward. What they're trying to do with this proof of delegates 
and staking system that they have, this different mechanism. And it's different from other proof of delegates where you get your tokens back and the proposals and you can have multiple layers of voting mechanisms where you can delegate someone to be your vote because you're busy and you can't be voting all the time on these proposals or you trust a person or trust a group of people to make the, a voting decision. And then that group of people can actually delegate and delegate and delegate and it goes on and on and on, if you will, like a chain, if you will. And you can take your vote back at any time instead of it being burnt or spit, like, oh, you made a mistake by trusting this person, that type of a deal. Uh, that's what basically in essence they're trying to do. They're trying to do a different kind of voting semi-democratic republic style for the blockchain when it comes to proposals of improvements and what uh, the community should do with different funds. In the case of the Tezo Foundation, I'm creating this hunt. What type of language their, their contract should be, the expansion of the network, improvements, Soft work, hard work, things of that nature is something that is voted on by the community. And what you do is you go from the Tezos address and move it, move some of your funds to the delegated address and thus um, having a say. So you don't actually have to have a vote at all. You can just operate on this particular address and with Tezos or whatever. But if you want to have a greater say in the community and what the network does and participate at that level, you have to actively move your, your funds over or portion your funds over and participate in that type of a voting system. Um, it's different. It's interesting. And, um, Also, they, they don't do the proof of work as far as mining. They do like, like the proof of stake and the delegation and validation method, which is very different. You know, it's something that's been going on within the community as far as proof of stake goes, but the, that's been the big debate, which has a greater value, proof of work or proof of stake. And that is still continuing forward, even with the rise and up and downs of the Bitcoin value there's still a lot of these different proof of stake projects are still ongoing and still have pretty high value if you think about it considering how um, the type of method they're doing while ethereum still proof of work they're supposed to switch over to proof of stake and we'll see how that goes but that's the basic essence for tezos for the purpose of the hunt um it's just another blockchain project or mechanism out there that has a bit of value. In this case, $1 is the value of the XZT, and they're doing a prize. And basically, as I said, they're trying to gamify the development of their system here. And with this particular hunt, to be able to solve for these puzzles, like probably like activating the different types of smart tra contracts or maybe even creating smart contracts or you know probing or um, hacking them or figuring them out um, they're probably actively seeking people that are of that mindset that developer mindset that either they've been at ethereum project or part part of tezos but not actually a developer or anything like that to develop the different software programs that would work within the tezo system and It'd be interesting to see if this works. If this is a way to get um, people economically incentivized to create quality projects or quality software for the system and for people to get paid. In this case, the foundation or the overall Tezo community has set aside monetary value for this purpose. Uh, we'll see when the year, the year ends up, you know, in August 22nd, 2020. Um, 2020, wow, I'm so old. Uh, <laughs> for, um, if this works, if this is a methodology to get projects funded, where you do a, a gamified development system. Um, but yeah, uh, for the most part, we're not going to really know anything how this is going to go until September 10th when we see the first mini hunt and see how you know what the interest is how many members of the tezo community come in uh, how many people from the satoshi's treasure hunt come over from the to the tezo hunt how many outside people are just interested in maybe gaining five thousand dollars in value 
participate, you know, from the larger cryptocurrency community, from the larger software development community, the open source community, all these little mini communities that could probably gravitate to this particular project. So I think this pretty much covers everything. You know, we cover what a smart contract is, what a token and non-fungible token is, um, what I think about that, the dynamics of the game, uh, the mini hunt, and just the announcements overall. Um, again, everything is linked in the in the information below. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, comment below. I'll try to answer them through my best of my abilities. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to cover the Tesla game per se. I'm going to do definitely the mini hunt September 10th. And it's kind of a wait and see approach because I'm more familiar with Bitcoin and a little bit familiar with cryptography and some of the terms of the code breaking stuff versus just development skill stuff for computing. Um, I don't know if I can give enough insight uh, for the Tezo community if they want to follow along and figure things out. But again, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, my name is Hiroshi Scheib. This has been Satoshi's Treasure Hunters. Um, welcome uh, members of the Tezo community. Um, I hope this has been insightful for you. And um, if you're interested, uh, you know, I have links to the end of my video of uh, different Satoshi's Treasure Hunt videos, uh, particularly what Satoshi's Treasure Hunt is about and how you can get on ramp yourself. Um, for the most part, until the next clue drops, because of recording of September 